Happy day, everyone. This is Orekoya Olishegun. This is Mathematics Fundamentals on YouTube. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and click on the notification button to have more of my video. Uh, today, we are taking a topic in mathematics, and that topic is under what is called ordinary differential equation. Ordinary differential equation. This ordinary differential equation is made use of in solving uh, models in physics, in mathematics, in biology, uh, in uh, chemistry, in engineering, and can also be used uh, to solve a uh, problem relating to motion, motion of bodies, motion of bodies under pull of the earth, under the pull, the pull of the earth called gravity. So uh, this one uh, is being studied in physics, and we can also use a OD to also study rates the rates of growth the rates of growth of uh, population so these are the areas uh, of applications of uh, ordinary differential equation what is ordinary differential equation generally ordinary differential equation is the uh, equation that is a function of uh, the nth derivative uh, of a function of a uh, 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 dependent variable y with respect to the independent uh, variable x uh, together with a particular function of uh, x. When this particular function of x, call it g of x, is non-zero, we call this uh, ODE, like for instance, where we have something like uh, ay prime prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to g of x so what i have here is actually an expression that is generalized up there so in this case now y prime prime is the second order the meaning of y prime prime means the square y the s square so this is because of these two we call it second second order ordinary differential equation so when we have this function of g of x that is not equal to zero this expression that we have here is called non non homogeneous non homogeneous non homogeneous non homogeneous ordinary differential equation so but if g of x is equal to zero we call it homogeneous ordinary differential equation so today we are taking uh we are going to solve a problem involving non homogeneous non homogeneous ordinary differential equation that is of the second order that is of the second uh, order. Now, before we go into problem solution, I want us uh, to take note of this. When I have nth derivative of independent variable y with respect to the dependent variable x, everything raised to power m. The n here, the value of that n, refer to the order of our differentiation. Why the m that is outside is degree is the degree of the derivative or that is the power to which that derivative is raised to. When the value of m is equal to 1, we have what is called uh, first uh, order first order ordinary differential equation. Take note of that. Let me repeat it again. The n y, the x n raised to power m. When the value of our m is greater than one, 
then we have what is called nonlinear 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 uh nth order ordinary differential equation so um when the value of our n is equal to zero that means there is no differentiation actually y is actually the zero y the x zero take note of that thank you now we want to solve a problem involving second order non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation that is the topic for today but we should must we must have, have a background on first order first order ordinary differential equation uh the background on different solution we have very uh, uh separable variable method separable variable method of solution uh we have what is called um direct method of solution direct method then we have what is called homogeneous method of solution homogeneous method under the first order under differential decision we have what is called exact method and a non-exact method non-exact method as well as the Bernoulli equation method to solve the uh, first order ordinary differential equation so today we are going to solve a problem under the second order ordinary differential equation OD that is a hom uh, homogeneous type homogeneous homogeneous type so um let's have a problem and then this particular problem we are going to solve we are going to use a method called separable variable method that method is called separable separable variable uh, no uh separable vari uh, variation of parameter variation of a parameter please take note of that variation of parameter method not separable variation of parameter parameters uh, method that's the method we are going to consider now let's solve a problem let's say we have um solve we are given this problem we are asked to solve since y is equal to 5 dy dx minus d square y dx uh, square plus exponential raised to power 2x let's say we are given this problem to solve first and foremost we, are, we can rearrange this problem in this format we can have it as a taking what we have a leaving this uh, exponential function alone on this side we can take this other one to the left hand side of the uh, equation so we have uh, this now the square y the x square you know that we have minus in front of this the square y the x square so when we take it to the other side it become positive so the square y the x square then we have plus in front of this uh, 5 here what we take to that side become minus so it's going to be minus uh, 5 dy dx then where would uh, the 6 y is there then we are left with a uh, e raised to power 2x we can rewrite this in a more compact or shorter form the, the square y the x square can be written as a uh, y prime prime minus the y dx can be written as uh y prime so i'm going to have 5y prime then plus uh, 6y is equal to e raised to power 2x 
So this question now can be written in either of these uh, three ways. Now, to solve this problem, I can rewrite. Let me rewrite the question in compact form here: minus five y prime plus uh, six y is equal to e raised to power two x. Now, I can generalize this by writing this in this format as a a y prime prime plus a b y prime plus c y is equal to g of uh, x. This g of x means the function of x and that is what is represented here as e raised to power 2, two uh, x. This one that we, I have here is the homogeneous 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 uh, equation h e homogeneous equation i can rewrite it as a no this one is a non homogeneous sorry non homogeneous equation so i can make it homogeneous by setting g of x to be equal to 0 so i have a y prime prime plus b y prime plus uh, c y is equal to 0 so what i have here is a uh, homogeneous uh, equation of the ODE of the ODE, ODE. now the general solution of this problem can be written as a uh, y general is equal to y complementary equation plus y particular equation and uh, this particular uh, this complementary equation y can be written as a c1 y1 plus a c2 y2 and this y particular equation can be written as u1 y1 plus a u2 y2 this approach is called variation of parameter variation of uh, parameter and that's the method we are using here to solve the original problem that is given take note of that now um from the original equation y prime prime minus 5y prime plus uh, 6y is equal to e raised to power 2x i can have what is called um characteristic equation so let me rewrite this y prime as instead of prime i'll put this raised to power 2 so i'll write it as m square minus 5m plus 6 is equal to 0. so what i have here is the characteristic equation of the uh, non-homogeneous version of the original equation i have here so I need to solve this one is a quadratic equation so i need to solve this quadratic equation we think of two numbers that when we multiply together we have plus six when you sub, uh, when you add them together when you sum them together we have minus five we can see that uh, these two numbers are minus two and then uh, minus three because minus two times minus three minus two times minus three they give us plus six and then uh, minus 2 minus 3 will give us a uh, minus 5. so this equation this quadratic equation can be rewritten as a uh, um m square minus uh, 2 m minus 3 m plus 6 is equal to 0. we can factorize m out as m into bracket when you take m out from m square you are left with m when you take m out of minus 2 m you are left with 2 so whatever you have here, quickly write it on this side here. Then think of a number you put here. When you multiply, it gives you what is what you have here. That is a minus three is equal to zero. So uh, then we can rewrite it as a m minus two brackets m minus three is equal to zero. We suggest that m is equal to 2 or 3. Now, in my 
in my y complementary that i write y complementary is equal to c1 y1 plus a c2 y2 the value of this y is actually e raised to power m1 x and a e raised to power m2 x and the m1 and m2 they are the values i obtain in solving the last uh, quadratic equation and those values that i obtain are two and three so y complementary equation for the given uh hom or homogeneous uh, second order equation the original equation yc can be written as c1 now e raised to power instead of m1 i put two x there plus c2 e raised to power uh 3x so c1 and c2 they are arbitrary constant please take note of that they are arbitrary constant for the complementary version of the equation so i've already obtained part of the general equation of solution recall i said the general solution yg is equal to yc plus a uh, y particular so this particular uh, yc is what i just obtained which is a um c1 e raised to power 2x plus a c2 e raised to power 3x so that's that now since i've obtained the expression for the y particular i'm going to look for expression i sorry since i've obtained expression for the y complementary i'm going to look for expression for the y particular that's what i'm going to present now and then we know that uh, the y particular i'm going to vary the uh parameter and that's why the method is called variation of parameter it's actually u1 y1 plus a uh, u2 y2 now u1 this u1 is negative integral that particular uh, g of x then times y of 2 all over Wolfram uh, determinants. Wolfram determinants. That's y, y1, y2. And in my expression for g of x, that g of x is what we express our uh second order derivative uh equation too that is when we when we have the function of x alone on the other side of the equation in our original equation the left hand side of that equation is e raised to power 2x so that means g of x is actually e raised to power 2x then times a uh, y2 we know that uh, we have al already obtained the uh, y1, the y1 and then uh, y2. The y2 is uh, what I have in the complementary equation, and then the y2 there is e raised to power uh, 3x, e raised to power 3x. Then the g of x is e raised to power 2x divided by the Wolfram constant that is the determinant of uh, y1 y2 y prime of y y1 y prime of uh, y2 so let me rewrite that again y1 uh sorry the u1 the formula for u1 is actually minus integral g of x y2 all over wolfram determinants of y1 and y2 so this wolfram determinant which is a y1 and y2 is written this way you write y1 y2 then their derivative under y prime subscript one 
and then y prime subscripted to and then this actually means that you multiply this side which is a y1 times y2 uh, y2 that is y1 times y2 prime then minus you multiply this side that's going to be y2 times a uh, y1 prime so that's how to solve what we have under now um in my question g of x is the function of a uh, x which is e raised to power 2x times the y2 in the uh, expression is a uh, e raised to power 3x so divided by the Wolfram determinant so I'm going to get the Wolfram determinant for me to get expression for u1 this particular Wolfram determinant so the Wolfram determinant for u1 I will call it y1 which is a y1 y2 y1 prime y2 prime so I will substitute for the y1 and y2 my y1 is a e raised to power 2x my y2 is e raised to power 3x so for y1 prime you differentiate the e2x for y2 prime you differentiate exponential to power 3x so when we differentiate this first one we use this power the i mean the coefficient of the power to multiply that will give me 2 e raised to power 2x then to differentiate this one to use the coefficient of the power to multiply that will be 3 e raised to power 3 x so the next thing to evaluate this determinant is that we multiply along this particular diagonal the principal diagonal we subtract by multiplying the second diagonal from it so we are going to have e raised to power 2 x times 3 e raised to power 3 x from the law of indices to the power of 2 x times the power of 3 x means you add 2 x to 3 x that is 5 x so we are going to have 3 e raised to power 5 x then minus we multiply this second uh, diagonal e raised to power 3 x times uh, 2 e raised to power 2 x the power 2 x multiply the power 3 x means you add the power together so we are going to have 2 e raised to power 5 x now since what i have here are similar terms i can subtract 3 minus 2 that's uh, 1 so everything will be left with uh, e raised to power 5 uh, x that is the value of the uh wolfram and that wolfram is the same thing as for that of a uh u2 so wolfram 2 is the same thing as wolfram 1 so i don't need to calculate wolfram 2 again now uh now to now evaluate u1 now i substitute what i have for my g of x uh y2 divided by the wolfram so i'm going to have minus bracket e raised to power 5x divided by e raised to power 5x that's the wolfram the x so this is you know what we have in the numerator and the numerator are the same so they cancel a living one so it goes to be integral uh, minus integral one dx so when we differentiate we are going to have minus x i'm supposed to put the constant of uh, integration here but that has already been taken care of in my original expression for the complementary part of the equation and the particular part of the equation so the constant we match up so that's my u1 now let's calculate u2 the formula for u2 
is given as a integral g of x y1 divided by the Wolfram determinant y1 y2 dx and then g of x in my original equation is what is on the right hand side which is the function of x that is e raised power to x so u2 is equal to integral e raised to power 2x then my y1 that we have there before is a the y1 we have here before is e raised to power 2x so it's going to be times e raised to power 2x then divided by the Wolfram and the Wolfram that we got the other time is e raised to power 5x then the x from the law of indices the denominator e raised to power 2x times e raised to power 2x actually means e raised to power 4x anytime you are multiplying when the base are the same you add the power together then all over e raised to the power 5x dx from law of indices when you are dividing you subtract the power so you're going to be 4x minus 5x that is a uh, minus x so um my integral will not be integral e raised to the power minus x dx so when we want to integrate this particular uh power as a negative coefficient so use the coefficient to multiply and the expression remains the same minus x i should have written the concept of integration but that has been taken care of in my original expression so you leave it like this so this is my u2 now we are now going to uh, rewrite the general solution y general which is a y complement plus y particular and you know that uh, the formula for y complement is actually means c1 y1 plus uh, c2 y2 and for the particular is a uh, uh, u1 y1 plus a uh, u2 y2 so we have gotten expression for c1 y1 uh, c2 y2 u1 y1 and uh, u2 y2 so we are going to put we are going to substitute them back so y general solution will now be uh, c1 times e raised to power 2x plus c2 e raised to power 3x then plus my u1 is negative x that is a minus a x e raised to power 2x then plus for the u2 y2 let me write it down here that's um e raised to power 3x times minus e raised to power minus a x so now if you look at uh, the expression that i have here we can see that c1 raised to power 2x and we also have c1 e raised to power 2x plus uh, c2 e raised to power 3x plus minus e raised to power 2x plus e raised to power 3x minus e raised to power minus uh, 2x this can be simplified further as y general is equal to c1 e raised to power 2x plus c2 e raised to power 3x minus x e raised to power 2x minus e raised to power 2x now we can see that uh, i have e raised to power 2x here i have also have a e raised to power 2x here 
the constant is minus one so this constant this c1 is a constant this minus one is a constant i can i can combine them together the two constant together because these are like terms so i can add them together and call it constant c3 so by combining c1 e raised power 2x and a minus e raised power 2x together because minus one is a constant i can combine with this c1 so i call it c3 so i have it as a e raised power 2x then together with plus c2 e raised power 3x minus x e minus x e raised power 2x so this is the general solution concerning the given problem on the non-homogeneous second order or ordinary differential equation by what is called variation of parameter method thank you for watching please you can review this video try to go through it as many number of times as possible for you to be able to grasp each step that has been stated once again this is orekoya olushegun this is mathematics fundamentals on youtube thank you for your time have a nice day bye